take a look at our tale of the tape. Age experience definitely goes to Scott Tomats. Height advantage goes over to Jacob Jokola. Weight pretty much dead, even four inch reach advantage for Jacob Jokola as well. We'll see how this co-main shakes out as we get ready to head inside the cage. Scott Tomats getting his final preparations here. Now one's got to wonder what kind of Scott Tomat fights we are going to see. Are we going to go back to a judge's decision or does he have the highlight material in him once again? Well, you know, Scott Scott has kind of a definable style where he just kind of waits forward and, and really likes to strike. So he's got a really good ground game. You know, he's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. So, you know, obviously that's always there, but I think he's he always looks to try to win it on the feet. All right, we're going to go inside with Britt Talbert for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event. This fight here is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Front Street Fights lightweight division. Uh, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands in here tonight at five feet, 11 inches tall. He weighs in at 154 and a half pounds. He steps into this match tonight undefeated with a record of three wins against zero defeats. Representing Warrior Camp, fighting out of Spokane, Washington, Jacob. Jokela! And his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the blue corner, standing in here tonight with a record of five feet, nine inches tall. He's 155 and one half pounds. He comes in tonight with a record of eight wins against four defeats, representing Combat Fitness, SBG Idaho, from Boise, Idaho! I give you Scott! Tickle fight, Thomas! Our referee for this bout will be Tom Sumka. Tom, can we get fighter instructions, please? Okay, guys, I expect a good, clean fight. I expect you to follow my instructions at all times. Let's touch them up, prepare for battle. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? It's time for a downtown throwdown! All right, here we go. The co-main event between Jacob Jokola and Scott Tickle Fight Tomats. The intensity coming off of both of these fighters' faces, absolutely incredible. And uh, it looks like Jacob elected not to touch gloves while Tomats was asking for it. So, you know, that could set the pace right there. Once again, Tomats kind of standing in the center of the ring, trying to control it. Head and arm, but it gives him his back. Now, Let Jacob come directly to him, and he's able to get the back mount and back position that he wants. This is not a good position for Jacob to be in. He appears to have a rear naked choke, and how deep is it, though? Really hard to tell uh, from our vantage point. I don't think he has point. it right now, He's because Scott's still using the wrist ride. His corner's asking Jacob to put Jacob's Scott's going down to the ground a little bit. He's bleeding big time. Bleeding big time out of the nose. Once again, like I said, this is one of the worst positions to be in in jiu-jitsu and in MMA because you can't see what's coming. And Tomitz is, is sticky. He's not sweaty at all yet. He's strong. He hasn't even flinched at this point in total control of this one. And this is what I was talking about before. See, see how Jacob needs to turn in and almost give a mount to try to escape. You know, this is like what I was talking about. You need to go through the fire to kind of get out of the fire. This is exactly what I was talking about. Scott Tomets in control of the first minute and 10 seconds of round number one, scheduled three rounds of our co-main event this evening of Front Street Fight 6, a salute to service, of course, as always, presented by bodybuilding.com. Tomets has total control right here. You know, Jacob is trying to twist his upper torso, but his lower torso is staying locked in with that, you know, control of Tomets, so, you know. The control, he's got there. the heel Now he's got a mount, there. you know, which is honestly better for, for Jacob because he can see at least what's coming. Well, and we saw that in Brendan Raftery's fight against Joaquin Calderon. He spent a lot of time on his back, but he was able to hold him, kind of slow it down a little bit, and, and really keep, you know, try to minimize the damage. And Scott has, has inflicted guy. a bunch so far. Powerful guy. That's an unbelievable feat of strength to escape mount like that with a head and arm. Nice back throw. This is called belly to back souffle in wrestling. That scores a lot of points with the refs. And Tomitz has a really good wrestling background. You know, he's, he's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, but I think he's been doing wrestling longer, to be honest with you. The belly to back suplex there, it, it takes a lot out of you, not only the shock, but you're hitting on the uh, 
the kind of the back of the head, the neck, the upper shoulder area too, which which can kind of stun you and disorient you. Right. Uh, right now, Jacob's doing actually the wrong thing by he he stuck his hand in there to try to peel off the hooks of Tomitz. And now he's got one arm to defend a choke. That was the wrong move, and that could that could actually spell defeat for him right there. Look, now his he's arm actually is turtled up, and he's given up the right side of his face. Scott Tomitz able to capitalize got with a couple of the right hands. He's coming in more hard elbow to the back of the head, just swinging away with those rights. Jacob's corner is just totally silent right now. You know, totally silent corner. And, you know, because this is the same exact position. So why, why shout instructions that you already shouted once before? Final two minutes of round number one of our co-man event between Scott Tometz and Jacob Jokola. Tilko fight pretty, pretty firm control of this so far. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, these, they're not sweaty. This is the first round, and you know that's that doesn't do well for uh, Jacob and, and Tomitz right there is just keeping grinding Taking his head. Taking his time, the wait The problem for is Jacob, Jacob's Jacob open to an arm bar right here because when he's when he's doing that bridge out of there, and you he's gotta, holding onto his head. You gotta think that, that, that Tomitz is aware of that. And Tomitz Coming up on really, the final 90 seconds of round number one here. Tomitz really isn't worried about going mount and that's kind of more of an MMA thing. You know, a lot of times being in half guard is, is sometimes better because you can, you can generate more power with punches. One minute, 10 seconds left of the first round of our co event this evening. Scott Tillman, it's Jacob Jokola. Jacob still, he's been in a couple of precarious positions throughout this first round, but for doing his best to, to, to fend off Tomets and, and really try to get into a position where he can escape and, and maybe take a bit of a breather, which he has to hope for in this break here coming up in about 50 seconds. But again, Scott Tomets has stopped everything that Jacob's been trying to do. Well, you know, my only critique of Tomitz is saying, you know, he's had some openings to, to go for some submissions. So, you know, he's obviously the more dominant guy, but it's hard to it's hard to criticize. But, you know, if I could look to be objective, I would say, you know, Tomitz needs to, you know, maybe maybe go for some subs. And, well, right here he's going for an Americana. So there you go. Which you've seen a couple of those tonight. One actually very successful as we enter the final 20 seconds of the first round here. We encourage you to follow along on Twitter. Uh, using the hashtag Jokola versus Tomets. Again, weigh, with, weigh in with your opinions on this fight. We want to hear who's your favorite so far. How do you think the round's gone? What's your prediction for the fight? As we are just about done with round number one. Jokola looking for that. It's called empty half guard. Throwing a couple of knee shots to the body there between Scott Tomets and definitely a very, very much needed break for Jacob Jokola. is not looking good on his feet. He's kind of staggering back, not because he was knocked out, but because he was tired. He took a big, deep breath. And you know, that's what that's what we're gonna look for is now is this is the very, this is when it gets hard and this is when it gets more easy for Scott. That count and mouse game's, you know, gonna continue here as we start the second round. Uh, a little bit of leakage there from Jacob Jokola, but again, Scott Tomas in complete control of round number one there. Whether he's tired or whether he's hurt, it looks like he's regaining some composure here. Looks like uh, Jacob's corner is instructing him to take a couple of deep breaths. Doesn't seem too concerned, almost a little relieved that uh, you know finally made it out of that round, gets a little bit of a breather, able to regain his composure here. Well, you know, do I need to say it? You know, Scott Tomitz won that round, so. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, it was almost, it was almost so dominant, it was an 8-10 round, you know, but it was, you know, obviously a 10-9, you know, all Tomitz, and I think we might just see a little bit more of the same here. But like I said, it might be nice for Tomitz, you know, to kind of push the pace a little bit and look for a sub. All right, we are underway with round number two, the co-main event of Front Street Fight 6, Scott Tomitz and Jacob Jokola. Both fighters there seem to have the same idea uh, of going for a leg kick there. Jacob Jokola trying to throw a, a high knee kick there, almost a pseudo Wild. Superman punch there. Wild punch. Scott's keeping his punches pretty straight, which is good. He's taking a couple, but he also knows he, he's kind of Kind of sees it coming before it comes. Saw the nice punch come there, goes leg. for the double leg takedown. Jacob trying to fit it off a little bit. And again, 
needs to, you he saw, needs to climb to the cage and get yeah. back up. You saw Jacob trying to throw in a, a choke there on Scott, but again, Scott able to maneuver the body, get him, take him down, pen him against the cage, and really limit his mobility. Yeah, you really have to look to prioritize. I mean, you know, uh, doing uh, doing a choke that may, maybe uh, not work out or getting getting taken down. You know, it's like you have to prioritize and sit notice and recognize that. You know, on the split decision and the split second, you know, timing. So, so you know, he should have really just defended that takedown and really sprawled. <laughs> Now he's in a much more precarious position with his head cocked in the cage, and Tomitz on top once again. And you can see Jacob trying to lock in uh, a choke there, but again, no sign from Tomitz. You can kind of see the expression on his face right now. Just kind of thinking, strategizing, waiting to see what his next move's gonna be. He's getting pulled right to mount. Now once again, whenever Jacob reaches up and hugs him like that, like I said, it basically delays the inevitable and it gives you the arm. If Tomitz were to slide up to a high mount, Kind of like what I was talking about. Kind of push the pace a little bit. Now this isn't the place to really go for an armbar because he's, you know, in the cage. But you know, it might be nice to see, you know, because Tomitz kind of has mm -hmm. uh, Jacob, you know, kind of from every angle to kind of get a little bit loose and open up a little bit with submissions. And again, this fight's starting to look a lot like uh, Scott's fight with us during Front Street Fights Five. Very good ground game, uh, in firm control. Uh, Vince Morales to this point, excuse me, not Vince Morales. Daryl Flores. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell my memory shot yeah. at only 34 years old. Yeah. Uh, Daryl Flores definitely threw a lot of at Scott, uh, at Scott Tomac too. Very interesting. Yeah, almost had, a, game. almost had a uh, almost had a, an ankle lock and almost had a uh, uh, Americana. So you know that was or a Kimura maybe. So you know that was good and they were both kind of letting it fly. And right now Tomac is just really. Uh, you see to, uh, referee Tom Supnett slapping away the feet, and that's not because you can't put your feet in the cage. What that is is you cannot lock your fingers or your toes inside the inside cage. Inside the cage. You can use it for leverage to get it out. You just can't lock. Right. Looks and again, like he's working point, an Americana. I was going to say, at this point, he's Scott Tomets appears to almost, again, working in the Americana, but still letting Jacob, uh, yeah, Jacob expend as much energy as possible through an elbow is there as well, too. And that's what I was talking about right there. When 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 Jacob bridges away, he's leaving his left arm up in that in that instance right there. So so you know Tomitz could actually zero in on that and get a get an arm bar. An impressive move right there by Scott to able to roll through there and get back position, start throwing in more of the rights and the lefts here at this point. You got to assume that Jacob's got to do something and he's got to do something quick. Scott's doing an excellent job. I mean it's textbook textbook grappling. You know that's he doesn't have a choke. He, he, he might be going for an arm bar right here. You know, it's textbook grappling, but like I said, from a st fan standpoint, he's so dominant that maybe he might want to open it up a little bit. But he's doing everything right. So look at that hashtag reverse can opener. <laughs> <laughs> Final minute and 10 seconds of round number two between Scott Tomets and Jacob Jokola. A lot of this happening the same way as it's gone through round number one. The uh, the thing that all the fighters are doing well tonight is doing that wrist riding. You see Scott going for that wrist ride. And uh, the thing that Scott needs to focus on, which he is, is just keeping at least one hand underhook, and in this case his right hand, so he doesn't get bucked forward and bucked off of that back position. And here come the rights and lefts from Scott Tomets. Final 40 seconds. These are coming in hard. Landed about three or four good shots right there, referee. Tom Supnet, of course, checking in on Jacob Jokola, making sure he's, you know, still in the fight, still defending, making those moves to indicate that he still wants to participate in the fight, which it takes a lot for any fighter on any level to, to tap out or, or give up in a fight. Yeah, you know, Jacob's game, I mean, it's called main event. You're not just going to have your whole family show up and then, good and then, three or four hard and then give there. up. You know, he's doing a, doing a really good job, but, you know, he's just outclassed, especially on the ground. Final 10 seconds here of our co-main event. Again, Scott Tomets in firm control of this one. Jacob trying to escape, but again, Scott Tomets with the, with the late control, probably what's been his biggest advantage at this point able to, to control the lower body of Jacob, not letting him, you know, forcing him to contort that upper body and really expend a lot of energy and really just kind of sit back and uh, hold pace. Yeah, you know, he's, he's doing a good job. I mean, you can always, you can always, uh, you can always win, you know, but at some point the corner has to look and say, hey, look, this is not working. You know, you just don't have the tools. You don't have the assets to, to win. And this, you know, this is kind of a losing battle right now. As we get ready to go into the third round of this fight, 
more of the same you might expect from this one. You know, Scott just kind of as we saw with Joaquin Calderon and Brendan Raftery, just be patient, just relax, let the fighter come to you, let him to be the one to figure it out and, and fix his game. I mean, nothing Scott's done yet is wrong. And again, Jacob able to fend it off as well. Right. But you see in the even bigger organizations, you know, promoters, promoters encourage their fighters to say, even though you win, you need to make it exciting. You know, you need to be memorable. And, and Scott definitely has memorable highlight reels. But this is one of those chances where he could really freestyle and really open up and, and let something fly. So, so let's look to see if he does that in the third round or just more of that kind of dominant, uh, steady tsunami. And we are underway almost immediately going for a double leg, ends up a single leg takedown. Again, bringing it back down to the grain, uh, excuse me, the round where he's had control the entire time and knows that Jacob's really gonna have to work uh, on the ground to get past him. Did you say green? Are you are you at the golf course? Yes, actually my tee time's at uh, nine more. You wanna go? <laughs> <laughs> Scott passes that half guard really easily. And this is this is a position where Thomas could either ground and pound him out or sub him. He's gonna take the back here in a second with getting a left hook. And just like you said, going for that back yep. position. Another suplex. Almost lost the leg control there. A good opportunity right now for Jacob to uh, to maybe reserve, reverse. Uh, Jacob some needs of the to work this cross face more and make that separation, you know, to, to take away Scott's power. But Scott's gonna almost sit up out of the back door if he can. He'd pop his head up out the backside and and tilt tilt Jacob back. Jacob needs to do, you know, anchor, keep doing what he's doing, anchor. He could get a crucifix right here or a reverse triangle. See, like I said, Thomas popped his head out the back door and back after it. Another single leg, dump. One minute, 20 seconds into round number three of the co-main event. Jacob's getting too high with the sprawls. He needs to put his chest more by the shoulder blades of Scott. That's why Scott's able to power up. And Jacob also needs to cover Tomitz's head with his torso so Tomitz doesn't have any power. Those shots not really have an effect on Scott Tomitz. But again, this is the best position that Jacob's been this entire fight. Right. Uh, he shouldn't have done that. He should have stayed on top. Now he went into the guard of Tomitz, which is you know, pretty, pretty good, so. minutes into round number three again Scott Tomac just holding on control letting Jacob do his thing and this is the best again as we mentioned Jacobs looked all all fight really has a chance here and again if he's going to do anything uh, to counteract the first rounds he's got two minutes and 47 seconds to make sure that it happens Tomac just staying connected you know and that also saves him from getting any kind of wild knockouts you know Tomac can kind of get saved from any damage and just grinding, we've got two and a half minutes left. And He's backing up Jacob into the cage, limiting uh, Jokella's options as to what he can do, where he can go. Slow and steady sometimes always wins the race, my friend. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's like Tomitz has all the, all the assets, all the skills to, to make this a little bit more flashy. And like I said, he's not doing anything wrong, but you know, everybody's here watching him just grapple him and you know, it's good, but I, I would like to see kind of like a... And again, you don't want to count Jacob Jokla out. You're not in the co-main event for no reason. Right. I mean, it, right. we've seen it before. It's happened several times. Four right. chance to reverse in the blink of an eye. Right. And the only reason I'm saying that, honestly, is uh, look for an armbar. Look for an armbar right here. The only reason I was saying that is because I have to take up air time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, look for a leg lock right here. This is called a heel hook. This is a good position. This is a good position for Scott. He's looking for the heel hook right here. Just looks totally relaxed and calm he right now. He needs to get Jacob right off of balance and look for that heel hook. Now take the back, get his head up. There's also a calf slicer here if he wanted to. Jacob able to get his feet free. See, and look at that those. transition where Scott kept his head next to Jacob. Is that that minimizes his damage? Now we're coming down to almost a minute left. As Mitch mentioned, we are down to one minute, ten seconds of our co-main event of Front Street Fight Six. The salute to service presented by BonnieBuilding.com. Jacob Jokelin not giving up on this one, trying everything he can. Looks like a triangle right here. But again, Scott Tomas has the answer for any answer that Jacob has. Yeah, you know, Scott has a, a triangle. You know, he's going to be working the triangle. And, you know, if I was Jacob, I'd just encourage him, hey, you went this far, don't get submitted, buddy. 
These two are going to give it everything Stacked they got in the final 40 nice seconds. Escape. Jacob needs to pop up and get some get some damage in, get some payback. He's got to do it in seconds. the final 30 seconds of the co-main event. Final 15 seconds of round number three, the co-main event of this evening. And again, Scott Tomac trying to throw in a few final punches Let's see here. Let's play here. Good hard right knee to the face there. A second one there, and that's how we are going to end the co-main event of Front Street Fight 6. A salute to service presented by Bodybuilding.com. One again for the second time tonight. Second time in a row, as a matter of fact, would assume we know how this one's going to go down. Oh, yeah. It's no uh, no mystery right here. Here you see on the replay a possible heel hook. If Tomitz would have kind of gotten Jacob off balance or even dumped him down to his to his butt, he could have got that uh, that heel hook, you know. But just know he's not really worried about it anyways. And here, watch the transition where he keeps his head close to his body. That's that's really good to, to minimize damage and any, any elbows and... and uh, that's what you saw actually in the Vince Morales fight and the, the Wick fight was Wick doing a lot of elbow shivers. Here's, and Jacob, you can see kind of the defeat, you know, hands on the knees and kind of knows pretty it. tired. But yeah. again, you know, it, it, like we said it for Brendan Raftery, you gotta give it to Jacob Jokola. Again, he spent a lot of the, a lot of the fight, two and three quarter rounds uh, on defense and had a, a good flash of offense at the end there. I just see a post-fight handshake between Jacob Jokola and Scott Tomets. You know, the physical ability that it takes for a fighter to stay in a fight like that as long as you can, and really not give up, that really speaks to the athleticism of all the fighters that you've seen on the card tonight. Yeah, you know, he, he came prepared, and this is really good. You know, Scott uh, Scott did a really good job at matchmaking on this, and-, and uh, Todd. Todd, I mean, sorry and uh, got, got Scott a, a really good fight, you know, but but it, uh, this guy was just uh, a little too outmatched. All right, well, here we go into the cage, and let's find out the official score from the judges for ring announcer Britt Talbert. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the judges' scorecard, how about a nice round of applause again for both of these warriors here tonight, especially Jake Jokla coming down from Spokane to take part in Front Street Fight 6. We will go to the judges' scorecards, and they all have it. Howard Hazelbaker, Randy Anderson, Steve French, 30-27, a unanimous decision for Scott Ticklevite Thomas! <laughs> Your winner by unanimous decision. All right, Tickle Fight. Young Buck coming up here, or coming down here from Spokane, 3-0. and You had more fights than him, but boy, you guys both emptied the tank, didn't you? Oh yeah, that was a tough fight. Tried to finish him, but you know, ran out of the gas, a little bit in third. So, need to go watch the tape, get back in the gym, see what I can do. All right, we've had you here on the card a couple times. What's next for you? We always like to find out, what, what are you thinking about? Uh, hopefully November, you know, Todd, looking for a slot <laughs> on there, so. Uh, Hook a brother up if you can. Who do you want to thank here? Obviously, we know you don't get in the ring here without great support, Scott. Who would you like to thank? Uh, first and foremost, because my family are all intense over there. I love them. Wouldn't be here without them. Um, the gym, all my brothers down at SPGI. Um, worldwide, you're a great organization. Um, Tiger 2, AMRAP, my sponsors, and uh, my manager, Alfred Benson. All right, Scott, before we let you go, we're going to have Bree come in here from, uh, from Twin Peaks. She's got a swag bag here from our friends at bodybuilding.com. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, your co-main event winner, Scott Ticklefight Thomas.